Hey everyone, Shashank this side. I hope you all are doing well today and safe at home. As you can see on my screen, agenda for today is how you can access your private EC2 instances with the help of Sessions Manager. So Sessions Manager is a module within AWS Systems Manager and I have done a demo on how you can use Sessions Manager from AWS dashboard and I'll share that particular video to understand the concept behind Sessions Manager and how you can use with the help of AWS dashboard. But today we'll be going to discuss like a deeper dive how you can access your EC2 instances which are in private zone without going via your jump host, passion host and try to save the cost across maintaining one environment of a passion host into your production staging or dev environment, right? So instead of giving a public IP, instead of maintaining public IP, maintaining number of security groups, opening number of ports for number of uh, person within a team, we'll not be going to do all this stuff today. We'll be directly going to access our EC2 instances with the help of Sessions Manager. And there are like few requirements behind that. And we'll be going to have a practical demo on that side. So before going into a practical demo, I just want to discuss little bit regarding the concept again on the Sessions Manager. And then we'll be having a practical demo. So what Sessions Manager is all about? It can be used to access your instances within your private subnets that allow no ingress from the internet. So you don't require to have an inbound connection from the internet to your environment. AWS SSM also provides the ab ability to establish a shell onto your system. So with, with the help of, uh, because we'll be going to use AWS CLI and the access key and secret to access your environment. So we'll be going to provide an access to a certain IAM user. We'll be having a role that will be going to associate it with our instances so that we can access our instance with the help of Sessions Manager, okay? So SSM also provide the ability to establish a shell onto your system through a native service or by using it as a tunnel for other protocols such as SSH that we used to de deal a lot in a day-to-day -day environment or RDP as a matter of fact for the Windows environment. So what are the benefits behind using Sessions Manager? One of the best part which I see using Sessions Manager is I can secure my environment from hackers. So I can tighten up the security within my environment without going to my public world and access my servers, renew my secrets key, access key, because we'll be going to use AWS CLI to access these environments. And when I say AWS CLI, obviously it contained within your IAM policies, identity and access management policy. So where we can define, we can restrict which all resources needs to be accessed as part of these particular architecture. You can also save the logs, like what all activities are happening from that particular IAM user. So for example, if I'm accessing production, if I'm accessing a staging environment, I can log all those activity very easily to S3 bucket or wherever I want to. Plus shell access is completely contained. As I said, within an IAM policy, you can restrict those. You don't have to manage your bastion host. So you are saving a cost over there. You don't have to maintain any public IPs. Plus you don't have to maintain your security firewalls like from public world to bastion host, from bastion host to your private EC2 instances. So these are the major benefits that what I see behind using Systems Manager. So how the world look like when it comes to have a bastion host or a jump host into your environment. And I know like a lot of companies use bastion host, even I have used within certain companies from bastion host, I access my environment within the private subnets. But yes, that was, you can consider that particular architecture as a legacy architecture. Now we have a lot of different functionalities to secure our environment in much granular way. So what are the drawbacks you see using Bastion host, right? First, you will need to allow SSH inbound rule at your Bastion host from the public world. So for example, let's say somebody made a mistake and open up a port 22 or 3389 for windows from all over the world. Hackers can easily hack your bastion host and from bastion host, 
they can easily access your private EC2 instances. That's something one of a major drawback that what I see as a security threat using Bastion host. You can tighten up the security for the Bastion host as well, but again, there is always a risk involved if somebody is not efficient enough to block all the ports needed. You need to open up a ports to your private EC2 instance in order to connect from your Bastion host. Again, if somebody hacked your Bastion host, they can easily hack your private EC2 instances. You need to manage SSH keys of your users. You will need to generate SSH key pair for each user and get a copy of that same SSH key across your user group. So these are the very basic thing that needs to be tightened up. If you are using Bastion host, I'm not saying you don't need to use a Bastion host, but in order to use Bastion host, you have to tighten up a security much more granular way. And if you are in the world of AWS or Azure Cloud or GCP, as a matter of fact, we have functionality of not using Bash and Host, reduce the cost over that particular machine. So even a T2 Micro costs you around $10 to $15 a month. And again, T2 Micro is not sufficient if your environment is big and number of users are using a lot, right? Even the cost, as I said, the cost is associated with your running EC2 instance. So these are the drawbacks what I see against Bash and Host, right? Now, access without Bash and Host, how it will look like. So we don't have any server in picture. We don't have any public subnet servers. You just have to install an AWS CLI, which is a command line access tool from AWS. And then we have to use a sessions manager plugin to connect to your Windows environment or to connect to your Linux world as well. So you can directly connect to your private subnet servers. Since we are directly connecting from our local host, local laptop without VPN, without direct connect, without any uh, Cisco or AWS site to site VPN, we have to make sure that policies created applied to the systems has to be in a more granular way. We cannot allow everything to a CLI user to access your world. It has to be very restrictive for the dev environment, for staging and production as well. Because as an architect, I would like to have the a better security for all three environments or number of environments you guys are using into your world. So that's what I see against uh, using Bastion host and not using Bastion host. Now, how you can achieve this? The next question comes there, right? So let me stop the slideshow and we'll go to our AWS dashboard. So I have two machines, it, uh, Linux and Windows. And again, guys, I'm showing this to you within my public subnet. I have a public IP associated with it, which is dynamic. I don't have a NAT gateway because I'm facing some issue from the costing perspective. So uh, actually I forgot to delete my NAT gateway and it cost me a lot. So I'm dealing with my account uh, to reduce that cost to a certain extent and uh, we can use. So as of now, I'm not using NAT gateway, that's in short, but still, uh, as, you, as you guys know, like if you have to access Windows world or Linux world, you have to use a public IP right to RDP or to SSH into the world. But here in this case, I will show you how you can use private IP and directly connect to your system without going to your VPN because I'm not connected to VPN. I'm totally on a local laptop on our internet world. I have an AWS CLI installed on my machine. So I will use that before using that. Let me show you if I go to the security group. So also, let me open up my policies. So as you can see, I have two machines and both machines are associated with an IAM role called SSM port forwarding. So if I go to my IAM roles, as you can see, uh, this is actually not required at all. Let me delete this, detach. So there is only one role required for machine to be associated with it's Amazon SSM manage instance code. So that makes it a uh, managed instance within systems manager. They're like requirements. Your instance has to be installed with SSM agent. So the latest OS that AWS is providing 
is consisting of your SSM agent by default on it, whether it comes to Windows or Linux world. But again, if you are using a custom AMIs, then please install SSM agent onto your system. I have done a demo on how to install SSM agent, how you can associate system with your systems manager role. So I'll share that video link as well in the description section. Please go through that. That is quite important factor over here because without this particular role, you won't be able to access your machine. Okay. So that's the role part. And these instances are associated with those roles. Now, if I show you the security group, I have a security group open, which is 10 slash eight, which is an internal network. I don't have any site to site VPN running in my environment. So still, uh, I have opened it. I was testing something out, but I am on my public network. So how you can connect, right? So you have to install a sessions manager plugin. So let me sessions manager plugin. I'll share this link of AWS. So once you install the sessions manager plugin, we have different options of doing it for windows, for Mac, for Linux, it's all there. So you just have to follow your uh, command line and install, download and install onto your system. If you're using Mac, if you're using windows, all the plugins are available over here. I'm using Mac, so I have installed on my machine. Okay. And second, which is quite important. You have to have your uh, AWS CLI installed on your machine. Okay, so if I show you AWS hyphen hyphen version, this will show me the AWS CLI. I'm using the latest one 2.045 Python 3.7.4. And this is the latest latest version of AWS CLI that my machine is having. So uh, what next? So the next part is how you can connect to Windows world. Let me show you the Windows world first and then I'll show you the Linux one. Okay, so we have a command for sessions manager. So I'm using AWS. This is my profile. That's my key name, SSM start session. And again, these are the run commands within a run document, I would say, uh, which is present over my systems manager. So if I go to my systems manager, there is a module called sessions manager, which I have done a demo all long back. I'll share the video as well. So you click on the start sessions manager and you can select any of the instances, click start. It will directly log on to your shell command window. Okay. Let me go back over here. So that's the command start your session and you have to use the instance ID over here with a document name. Again, the document name is your the automation document, which is a shell script in background. And I have done a demo on the automation document as well. So you have to use this particular port start port forwarding session. So we'll be going to use a port forwarding mechanism to connect to our windows instance parameters. This port number is the remote port, which is 3389 on the server and the local port number, whichever you want to use. So for example, if I want to use 9090, I'll use 9090 and you have to give the region. So copy this. Let's go to our shell. Let me maximize. I'll paste it over here. Click enter. Now this will try to start the session. You, you can see starting the session with sessions ID over here. Port 9090 is open onto your local system waiting for the connection. So now how you can connect to that particular windows world. Let me go to my EC2 and as you guys, as you guys know, like uh, to connect to a public environment, you have to use your public IP, but I'm not going to use a public IP. Instead, I'm directly going to use even not the uh, private IP actually. So let me go to my RDP and what I'll do since the local host is already mapped with port 9090, what I'll do, I'll give the computer name as 9090 connection name and the computer name. And I have to generate a password. So I'll go to RDP, get the password, browse, and I'll go to this password over here itself. I have a lot. So where is my 
this is the key that I'm using decrypt it copy and let's go over here administrator and our connection is created let's double click and you can see negotiating the credential connect once you connect it will try to use RDP into your system and if I show you the command window it's connected accepted for session I did this as you can see I have been connected to this environment using the private IP address or using the port forwarding mechanism from my local host into my windows machine and here we go we are all set right that's how you can connect to your windows world and you can do a lot of things this is one of the best part using port forwarding mechanism that what we have from AWS even in Azure and GCP as well we have a different mechanism for that but we can use it now how you can do the same stuff with the Linux world so let me copy the Linux instance ID and I'll use the instance ID over here as this port has to be 22 and since I'm using 1994 windows I'll use 1991 for Linux let me open up a new window okay maximize uh, okay go to root copy enter and the same way you will see starting the sessions and port 1991 is mapped now how you can connect to the Linux environment now since we have a port forwarding mapped already let me maximize cd download cd archive that's where my key is and i'll use strict host key checking no because i am having some permission to my uh, key pair so you have to give ec2 then local host and port 1991 that's the way you connect you don't have to use this one you can directly use ssh hyphen i then the key pair and your ec2 instance so let me connect restrict enter and you can see connected sessions accepted and I'm connected to my private window of EC2 instance directly so this is the way how you can restrict your environment you can restrict your access to the world and even you can res restrict access to your CLI user okay so they can access only your EC2 instance or they can access only your S3 bucket. So th that's a different scenario altogether, which I have already discussed as part of my IM series. So that's the way we should design our architecture of how to give access to different users because in a company we have different users like operations, infrastructure, admins, and different teams as well. They want to access environment. You can give access using sessions manager so the best part again as i said the security and the cost saving as well of your bastion host so just give it a try onto your environment guys try to show it to the management try to convince them that this is the better security model that we can go for and save costing on the bastion host side the elastic ip side and uh, yeah play it around into your world and please remember if you are doing a poc into environment or onto your account don't forget to delete your servers so again these sessions will be active remain active until unless your connection is accepted once you exited the connection the server will de get disconnected okay my windows as you can see the blue screen has been popped up in background and it is getting disconnected in background so that's best part and if I go to my AWS just select the instances and terminate in this way you will not be going to pay anything what I am doing as of now with my environment okay so just place out a comment in comment section if you're facing an issue I'll be there to help you have a nice day bye bye